This is part 14 in the Craftsman 150 drill press rebuild series. If you haven't seen part 13, click the link at the top of the screen. This is the final video in this series where we will complete rebuilding the drill press. In part 13, we assembled most of the drill press, but we did not put the motor on the drill press. And that is because I'm gonna to have to fabricate a spacer for the motor between the motor and the motor mount. So in this video, we're gonna be fabricating uh, different parts for the motor and then mounting the motor on the drill press and then test running the drill press and that will complete the rebuild. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. The motor that came with this drill press had a 5 8 shaft on the rotor and the motor I want to mount it to has a half inch shaft. So we need a bushing that bridges this gap. You can get these bushings off of Amazon. And they're not expensive at all, but all they do is take up the difference between the two shaft sizes. The problem with these bushings is that the gap that's in them is not large enough for the set screw to pass through. So we're gonna to have to widen an area for the set screw to pass through. To do this, I'm just using a grinding bit on the end of my Dremel or Fordham and I'm just hollowing out an area that will allow the set screw to pass through like so. And then we're going to install the bushing inside the pulley. So we're just going to make sure that the opening on the bushing is aligned with where the set screw goes. And we'll just drive it down into the pulley. And then I'm going to use an Allen wrench and just poke it through the set screw hole. And then align that area we widened on the inside with that hole. Done. So the other problem that I had with this motor is that the original bolts for the motor were square head bolts. And I could clean them up, but uh, I like using carriage bolts. And these are 5 16 inch by 2 inch carriage bolts. And I need them to be, or they might be 2 and a half, but I need them as long as they are because we're going to have to build a spacer. So I'm just going to polish the ends of those just like we would polish anything else. I chucked it up in my lathe, I sanded it, and then I polished it. And I do that with all four of these bolts. And these are galvanized. Not that that matters, but that's what they are. So you can see the capacitor cover on the bottom of the motor there, and it's protruding from the base of the motor. And that's because this doesn't have the sardine can in it like it should. It has a round capacitor in there. So we need a spacer that's going to bridge that gap. So I'm just using bar stock aluminum and I measured it to fit the length of the motor base and protrude about an eighth of an inch bigger. And then I cut two pieces out of that and it's half inch thick by one and a half inch wide. And I think they're about seven and a half inches long. And then I need to drill them out for the mounting bolts for the capacitor cover as well as the mounting bolts to mount the motor onto the motor bracket. So after we drilled it out, the last thing I need to do is I need to mill out a section of this for the capacitor cover to sit in a step because the screw heads for that capacitor cover cannot protrude past the end of this. So once I've got all that done, I'm going to assemble it. You can see how the capacitor cover sits inside that step. And we're just going to mount all this onto the motor.
I could have polished these pieces of aluminum or painted them. But I kind of like the, uh, the, the satin finish of the raw aluminum. And this is just a process of lining up all those holes and getting the bolts to go through them. And here you can see I can't get that bolt through the bracket, so I have to undo that end and lift it up a little so that the bolt can slide in there. There we go. Once we got all that tightened down, we can go ahead and mount this to the motor mount bracket. Now, until you've done this a couple of times, it's kind of hard to judge exactly where on the motor mount bracket this needs to be so that the pulley will align with the spindle pulley. But basically, you want to mount the motor so that it's at its furthest point down on the bracket for the top bolts. That's the bolt that I'm putting the nut on now. Of course, if you're using a different motor, it's going to be in a different place. But for me, that's generally where they sit. After we've got everything lined up, we can tighten it down. now we're going to just install the machine screws in the head casting just going to get them started they're not going to protrude into the opening where the rods go and we're going to lube those uh, openings for the rods So until you get a belt on this, you need to have a good grasp on the motor because it will slide right out of there. But we're just going to insert it in there and then tighten down the two machine screws. And I'm just using my body to hold it in place. 
And I went ahead and threw that threaded rod on the bottom of the motor mount so that it would keep it kind of perpendicular, but we're going to replace that threaded rod anyways. So right now the spacing between the motor and the head is not super important. We just want to get the motor on there. And then we can install the pulley. So we're just aligning the set screw with the flat on the rotor. And then tighten down the set screw. So you may have noticed I don't really use Loctite on my drill press on any of the screws. You certainly can, but uh, it's, I just don't use it really. And we're going to make sure that both of our pulleys are level and then I'm going to raise this one up about an eighth of an inch so that it is off of those screws that hold the felt cover on and then we'll tighten it down and then just test spinning it make sure it's not hitting anything on the motor next we're going to install the v-belt this is a Duralast cogged v-belt half inch by 45 inch it's 17455 from AutoZone is the model number for it you can use anything from a 42 inch all the way up to a 45 inch belt on these and then we're installing a uh, a screw actually in the threaded stud hole and now we're going to tension that belt. So I'm going to loosen the two set screws and the motor will not fall out now because the belt is holding it in place. And I'm just going to adjust that threaded stud a little. I've got a rubber cap on the end of it and a nut on there as well. So I can jam it up against the motor bracket once we've got everything set. So here I'm just using my hand to pull back on the motor and then I'll tighten it down. And I'll do the same thing on this side. You can see it a little better. I'm using my thumb against the bracket to push it away from the head casting and that'll tension the belt. And then we'll just adjust the nut on that threaded stud. And so you should see that the uh, motor mount bracket is in line with the back of the head. And then we'll plug it into some power and see what we got. So if you're getting some vibration, you can adjust that threaded stud so that it's resting against the head. And that should alleviate the vibration. And it's running like a champ. We'll just tighten down that nut to make sure it jams up against the motor mount. And everything is working like it's brand new. Put the chuck key in there. And this is the finished Classic Craftsman 150 drill press. So it took us 14 parts to get here. A lot longer for me than it is for you to watch it. But it's got all new bearings everything's been cleaned lubricated repainted polished ready for duty and a lot of fun to work on so if you don't have one of these drill presses and these videos have inspired you to go out and 
find one and rebuild it yourself or if you are rebuilding it and these videos helped you in your rebuild then I accomplish my mission so feel free to reach out to me here or on garage journal forum if you have questions I'm always happy to help out and these tools need to be preserved you know they're limited quantity I'm not making them anymore so they're outstanding products of a bygone era and if you're wondering what I will be working on next it's this this is a Craftsman Emerson Generation 2 15 and a half inch floor standing drill press. They only built them for three years. And it is the bridge between the classic Craftsman that we just worked on and the later Emerson Generations. Those gray ones you can see when I go around to the other side. But um, it has a lot of the same components as the 150s. But it also has a lot of different stuff, notably the shape. And this was the transitional drill press between the classic Craftsman's and the Emerson line. So that's what we're going to be working on next. Well, I hope you enjoyed these videos and this series. If you did, please like and subscribe. I enjoyed working on it and I enjoyed making these videos. So more to come and I will see you next time.